Hello and welcome to episode four of From the Hangar. Uh, I'm your host, Nathan. I'm so excited for you to be here today. Uh, you might be noticing we have a little bit of a different uh, background today. We kind of switch it up for you. You normally see the hangar door, which is actually uh, behind you, I guess, in, in your view. We're looking at it. Uh, instead, we wanted to give you a little bit more of what a hangar actually is. So we got some airplanes over here that are being worked on. Uh, we got some of our training aircraft and just thought we'd give you a, a different look. Um, we have a pretty special guest today, and I'll say that, and you probably will be like, oh, whatever, but uh, whatever. I am super, super, super excited uh, to have Destin Sandlin, a.k.a. Smarter Every Day, uh, depending on what you know him from. Uh, he's joining us today. He had the chance, uh, we actually had the chance to listen to you speak this morning and uh, have uh, the chance now to sit down on a podcast and, yeah, and thanks chat for a little me. bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for taking time. I know that this, this hangar is awesome. I, I visited several years ago in 2016, I think it was. Cool. And I remember uh, just checking out all these all these airplanes. It was incredible. I think this one back here, it's probably blurred out, but there's one without wings. I think you're going to need to work on that. Uh, it's, <laughs> you, you probably can't see it because of the yet. bokeh. Yeah, but, but anyway, it's <laughs> you might, might want to work on that one. So, yeah, yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. I know that this was a – we you said yes to this like kind of last minute, and so this is really big time. I know that the you have a busy day, busy schedule, so thanks for taking time to chat and hang Oh, out, I'm, so. a, I'm a big supporter of MAF uh, emotionally. I love – MAF, what you guys do is incredible. Um, it's it's unbelievable, really. You, a lot of people think that it's just airplanes and you guys go everywhere and you know just take sheep to you know or <laughs> sick kids or just whatever you're doing. But it's so much more than that, and it, that's why I really like being here at the at the headquarters yeah. here in Nampa because I can I can see what you do. I just had a really good time in the mail room. That was awesome. Uh -huh. We we you have a machine that. Like when people donate monthly at maf.org, by the way. <laughs> so, I didn't ask him for that. Yeah, he didn't ask me that. <laughs> so when people like monthly donate, they get this receipt or I don't know, a statement, whatever it is. And uh, I got to go to the machine that folds it up and stuffs it in an envelope. And nobody thinks about that. No. But it's a big deal. You got to do that kind of stuff. And it's, so, yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, always fun to be in Nampa. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you came in 2016. I actually started at MAF in 2017. Really? And so I started, and everybody was like, Have you seen this video from this guy, Smarter Every Day? It's this unbelievable jungle pilots are superheroes. And I was like, No, I haven't seen it. And then I watched it, like, obviously, because I came here. And uh, it's cool now to be chatting with you. Like, I was here shortly after you came here. So That's awesome. Cool, what, cool did, to see you. what did you do? You go to school or what's your background? Uh, actually, born and raised here in Boise. Well, we're in Nampa, but uh, yeah, I ended up getting an internship in college here. And a uh, long story, but my dad flew on MAF airplanes when he was growing up. Really? And, uh, over in Ethiopia. And so we love MAF. And w were, were you a missionary kid when that was happening? I was not. So he was actually the missionary kid. So oh, my grandparents wow. were uh, missionaries in Ethiopia. And okay. Yeah. Uh, they lived out kind of in the, the rough bush area of Ethiopia. And so my my dad was in boarding school actually from like really? five years old or seven years old to 12 years old and um yeah flew on maf airplanes to go see his parents who were living out in these hard to reach places in ethiopia really so. that th that was when maf was only flying cessnas right correct yeah. Yeah, yeah now is it the the caravan the cessna caravan at that point they were flying i want to say 182s okay so small small aircraft uh, okay over there and yeah he when when it moved up here in 2006, we like toured this immediately because he was like, "This is like the connection to his parents." And oh, that's awesome! Yeah, super super cool. Did you ever get to go to Ethiopia? I have not yet. Okay, uh, my Are you dad going has to been a couple times, and I need to go back with him just to to see it, to see what he grew up. I in. think it'd be cool to see it through his eyes. Absolutely. Yeah, to just have a conversation and see what it was like to him. Absolutely. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep that. Also, it's not ironic that we're drinking an Ethiopian coffee. <laughs> currently like is, is that did, did, did it on we purpose plan that i don't know it's hard to tell i guess you'll never know um, <laughs> it's good it's also 100 degrees in the hangar and this is hot coffee so uh, i think it's the right thing to do i think what you're saying is that i'm uh i need to get smarter every day is that what i'm hearing? no no you did great you did great <laughs> <laughs> well with that i'd love for you to just introduce yourself like um i know that you have uh quite the youtube following that was something that um from what it sounds like you just stumbled upon by sharing a video for your mm -hmm. dad i would love to just hear a little bit more about how you sure. got to be smarter every day. Okay, so um, it kind of worked like this. So I, I'm an engineer, mechanical and aerospace engineer, and um, I, I really love figuring out how the world works and figuring out how things happen. And a long time ago, uh, this thing came up called YouTube. <laughs> and um, as a, not a joke, but I thought it was interesting, I, I got my dad a chicken for Father's Day. And when you hold the chicken... And you move the chicken around, the, the chicken's head 
stays uh, in in the video. I say his head stays rock solid. I think it's actually a hen. <laughs> I called the the I don't know, but uh, it's really interesting. So the the chicken will stay there, and it's because of the vestibular ocular reflex that we have. I I think I'm getting this right. I'm not a biologist, but so basically, like if my hand is here. Mm-hmm. And I move it like this. Your eyes have the ability to track my hand, my hand yeah. without your head moving. Yeah. My understanding is that a, a chicken or a bird, they will lock their head in in one position optically. Like they'll oh. they'll just move their head, and then they lock into that reference frame, and then they move their body, and then they move their head, <laughs> and uh, and that's how they they move. And so I was in school taking some really interesting courses, and I saw this chicken thing. I thought it was hilarious. And so I recorded it for my dad, and I was like, "Hey, I got, I got this for my dad." And I had a just an old Mac computer, like the one, the first generation <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. MacBook or whatever. And I just hit the space bar, recorded it with QuickTime. I was like, "This is too cool to not record. This is what's happening." And I was in this thinky place, like, "Man, this, you know, it's like a feedback loop." And I put it on the internet, and uh, everybody thought it was hilarious, and they thought I was hilarious because I was like, "Man, this chicken." And so it was. That's how it started. Yeah. And um, then that that video got shared by a couple of people. It got shared by this gentleman that worked for Google at the time that was working on spatial tracking. Cool. He called it uh, head tracking, I think is what he called the technology he was developing. And the second thing that uh, happened is a guy named Michael Stevens from Vsauce, okay. um, which is an educational YouTube channel, and he, he does all kinds of things. Michael actually shared the video as well, and then wow. that's that's back when things could go viral. And totally. That, that happened, and then I was like, "Oh, this is interesting. I can I can learn and teach people, and we can all learn together." Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then my uh, my buddy Gordon, I said, I, th- "I think I'm gonna call it Smarter Every Day." And he's like, "That's a good name, but uh, you should make it Smarter Every Day." Three words because of grammar. I was like, "Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm not good with grammar." So he corrected me, and uh, been making it ever since. It worked yeah. out. Worked out pretty well. I think what's so cool about this is that um, just as you're sharing, it's 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 clear that you obviously have the talent of like explaining things to people that um, are not scientific. I will be the hundred percent honest. I was the history English person yes, uh, and not the math science by any means. But even when you're explaining things and, and watching your videos, I'm like, I feel like this is approachable and, and I learned something uh, even when it's on paper well over my head. And so it's, that's awesome. So, so here's the thing about, so what was your major? Uh, Christian ministry actually. So okay. not even history literature, but yeah. Yeah, okay, so I'm playing catch up to you in the humanities. I have, I have a buddy named Matt Whitman, and he studied history. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I have found that we, when I was younger, were told STEM, you know, science, mm. technology, engineering, math. Now they call it STEAM, te- science, technology, engineering, arts, math. Mm-hmm. And that was just pounded into our heads, like STEM degree, STEM degree, STEM degree. What I realized is we weren't reading literature mm. as much as we should have, and we were letting the humanities part of us slip. So I personally think that the humanities are extremely important, and I'm I'm leaning into that right now. Cool. And so I'm learning. I didn't even know what rhetoric was. Huh, I yeah. did. I did not know the word rhetoric, and yeah. I didn't know that it's, you know, using language to influence people. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, that's your field. That's yeah. not mine. Yeah. So I'm playing catch up, and uh, I right now I'm 41. I'm more interested in what you're doing right now. Huh. Like I've kind of I don't know. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that? It's. It's just, I think that says so much about who you are, though, too, of like wanting to learn all the time and wanting to consistently, yeah, just be curious. And I think um, there's that, I forget who said it, it's gone around on TV shows that, yeah, um, but it's be curious, not judgmental. And I think that huh. that quote um, of just, yeah, the desire to be just constantly curious. And, and I think that when you, when at odds, science, math, history literature and all that mm-hmm. at odds it's easier to be a little bit more judgmental of oh well, you're so smart or you're so posh or whatever and i think that uh it's cool that you have that perspective of just wanting to be curious about everything yeah it's, it's just fun i just like to uh, ask questions and like the mail room for example i never thought about how that letter gets stuck <laughs> in that envelope at scale and i mean they were they were doing awesome stuff in there yeah. and, and it was uh, it was really cool i think it was tim linda and Lindsay? Lindsay. Lindsay? Right. Okay, good, that's right. Good yeah. work in the, in the names. <laughs> I'm bad with names. I'm so bad with names. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have known that. So <laughs> It's really cool. It's really fun. So, yeah. uh, I don't know. It's I, it's a blessing and a curse. Like <laughs> I want to know how everything works, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's kind of hard to cut the brain off every once in a while. Totally. 
But uh, I don't know. The, what you guys do is amazing. And mm. the reason I think it's so interesting is it's if you have the Venn diagram, loving people, mm-hmm. you know, the curiosity and the technical side, mm-hmm. you guys do that. Like yeah. you're right in that sliver. And I've said it before, I think, in, in one of the episodes where I did with you guys at MAF, the, the superpowers thing. You, you guys are superheroes. You're, mm. you're making things happen using technical skills to affect hearts yeah. and uh, humanity. And I, I think that's very important. Hmm. And uh, that's why that's why I love what you guys do. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, that's actually a perfect segue into um, the Jungle Pilots are Superheroes video that you made. How did you come about wanting to make that video? Like, what was like? Uh, that's the next video that I want to make, and let's make it happen. How did you How did you get there? So um, the way that worked is like most. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm assuming a lot of people have heard the story of Nate Saint, Jim mm-hmm. Elliott, and uh, you know the, all, the, all the folks that that that. The one I read was Through Gates of Splendor. Yeah. And so when I read that book, I thought it was amazing. The thing that blew my mind was they, they were flying this airplane, and they would drag this line out the back, mm-hmm. and they could get this thing going where you, if you match the drag with the angle of bank of the airplane, you could actually communicate with the ground with a rope. Yep. And I loved that. I thought it was amazing. And then um, we went to Ecuador uh, in, in college, and I met a young lady, and her father flew. Um, to support missionaries, and I thought that was cool. And then I just found out you guys existed. Hmm. And when I found out you existed, I, I really wanted to learn more, and I reached out to some people here um, at Nampa. I think maybe they reached out to me. I don't even remember. Yeah. I just remember saying yes uh, as soon cool. as I saw what you did. It's incredible. Awesome. And there's to be clear, there's many other organizations doing similar things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, I, I just think they're all cool. I, I think what you guys do is it's very interesting because you're flying – I mean, these are turbines, right? Mm-hmm. And so it's pretty impressive. You guys have a good operation from the, the maintenance staff in aviation. That's super critical for, totally. for safety. You've got the the whole thing. It's just a well-oiled machine. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's fun to be a part of it. I say thank you like I'm like a part of or like a, You are. In charge of that. But, yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, so your role, if I understand correctly, is to communicate what you do to the world. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. How yeah. do you do that? Um <laughs> it's a it's a challenge and i think um you know this being on social media and um being uh in front of so many eyes like finding those spaces to be on instagram and the right things and twitter and, or x i guess now and mm-hmm. um facebook and all of those different avenues and i mean we're on every platform that you can think of trying to put out good content and yeah it's a it's a fun challenge because my job's pretty easy i just get to tell really cool stories of people doing really cool things. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Makes so fun. where is this going to live? Where's this? Po- Obviously it's a podcast. Yep. Yep. So it'll be on YouTube. Uh, okay. We'll cut it up and put it on all of our socials. So mm-hmm. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, X, still mm-hmm. getting used to that. And then uh, it's also on all audio platforms as well. And so, what is the handle for MAF? Uh, at MAF underscore US. So that'll Across be at, all platforms. Yep. All platforms. Uh, makes it easy for people yeah. that are. That are so the us. implication there by MAF underscore US is there's MAF underscore other things too. Correct. Which yeah. is, what, what uh, would they be? We have uh, Canada, UK, um, France, Switzerland, Spain, a, a bunch of different MAFs. And um, yeah, Mission Aviation Fellowship is a, a three part kind of sister organization. So there's us, there's MAF Canada, and then there's MAF International. The International falls with um, the UK, with France, with Germany, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, all these different places. So we're all under the same mission vision statements, um, but then we all uh, operate in just various different countries. So I didn't have, know this. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know this. And so do they have hangars at mm-hmm. other facilities like yep. this? Yep, absolutely. So there's a headquarters in Canada outside of Toronto area. Um, there's a office over in Australia. There's the MAF International offices in uh, outside of London. Uh, in the UK okay. um, and then yeah there's what we call resourcing offices and those are in France and Germany and, and all these other places around the world and and then yeah each of us so like Canada operates the program in Angola that's their main program to run and um, the UK or the international operates in Papua New Guinea and South Sudan and all these other places as well so um, but yeah then we all kind of share staff as well so we have people from the netherlands that share that are serving in papua indonesia and there are people from the u.s that are serving in papua new guinea and yeah we just kind of bounce around but for um legality it's a little bit easier to have it broken up for um for various purposes for taxes and things like that so oh interesting and and so one thing i've learned being here is that you have staff Mm -hmm. that work here uh, at headquarters yeah and you also have career staff that are out in the field yeah and they're funded in different ways yeah so you uh, for example a pilot 
uh, out somewhere or a teacher that's deployed. I'll say, what, what's the term you use when they're when they're downwind or you know they're in the commissioned? Field. Essentially, it would be a, okay. a good way to use it. Okay. Yeah. So when a person's out in the field, mm -hmm. they're commissioned. Um, they're funded by monthly supporters, correct? Yeah. yeah. And so how does that work? So does a person team up or they they hear the story of a specific family that mm -hmm. that's out there and once they hear that do they do they then donate monthly to that person yeah yeah so they can donate monthly or one time but yeah we have um what's called ministry partnership is a, a division of uh the group that i'm actually part of of ministry advancement and um their role is to help our missionaries support race and so mm -hmm. um our missionaries when they come to maf they go through a bunch of different evaluations and and things to make sure that they're qualified to, to fly or or to serve with maf and then um, they go through this whole training process and part of that process is how to raise funds for mm -hmm. their roles so then they go into um this support raising phase and so they have to go and uh, meet with a bunch of churches and and we have a large network of people around the country whether they're um churches or uh, various supporters of ours advocates volunteers private individuals yeah absolutely yeah. and so they'll go to their friends their family their home churches all of that and go and uh, ask if they want to be a part of partnering with the ministry and mm. um, that's kind of the way that we phrase it too is um not everybody like you and I are called to be on the field mm -hmm. um, and to be to be serving in that way. But um, there are a lot of people that are called to give. And so uh, it's a great way to be a part of their ministry uh, beyond just going and serving in these places. Well, one thing I think is so interesting about MAF is is you're in very difficult to reach places. Totally. Uh, you're a Christian organization. Uh, is, is that true to say? Absolutely. Like, yeah. 100 percent. Yeah. So you also serve non-Christians. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and, and tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did this podcast just become an MAF podcast? <laughs> I love it. Um, no, no. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I'm just cool. throwing you a softball. I know. I appreciate it. that. Yeah. Uh, but I actually don't know the answer to the question. So there's that too. Yeah. We, we <laughs> believe that we want to bring the help, hope, and healing of Jesus Christ through aviation. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, um, help, hope, and healing is not always just in the spiritual sense. It's sometimes in the physical sense yeah. with a disaster response is a great example of that, of, um, it's great to share the gospel, uh, but it's really hard to share the gospel when your village just got hit with an earthquake and you can't see the forest for the trees yeah. outside of um, so your you need world. relief. And, yeah, absolutely. And where's, so, where's that fancy pants coffee? I'm gonna do it. Uh, absolutely, it's coming <laughs> off from off screen. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. I love it. We're real here. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we with a disaster, um, with those kinds of places, but also just. Uh, the places that we serve in are um, challenging sometimes to get medical care. And medical care is one of those spaces that, um, yeah, not all the nurses that we fly in or not all the doctors that we that we serve are going to be believers. But we also believe that um, people deserve the dignity of medical care and the dignity yeah. of, of um, being able to have food and water and, and community development. We believe education is important. And so... Um, yeah, not everybody's going to be a believer, but we also believe that um, those people deserve the same things that we deserve, right? And and, and that just that basic level of humili humanity of just because they're living in a hard to reach place doesn't mean that they have to struggle with having a broken leg and not being able to have it fixed. And so yeah, um, that's a, a a really cool aspect, and it's actually one of the pieces that I believe so deeply in because. Yeah, if your leg's broken, I don't know if you're in the right spot to hear the gospel of Jesus. Uh, you're <laughs> probably more things wondering things about. <laughs> uh, you're probably more more wondering about like, hey, can we get this thing fixed first? And yeah. and being able to share the sh like the care of Jesus that that He showed with healing people, uh, both of their physical and spiritual ailments, is um, something that we want to model as well. That's a big deal. Yeah. I, I think I think it's huge because that's. You got to walk the walk, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and and so if if it becomes this insular Christian thing, it, I mean, I, I don't know. Obviously, supported by Christians, I just love the idea of money that I give to MAF being used to save someone in a village that maybe even hostile Absolutely. to what I believe, but they they need help and hope, and and it goes to help them do that. I think that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. So. Well, let's get back to you for a second because um, I would love to know you are very open about how much you want to learn and, and yeah. constantly wanting to learn. Have you ever gotten burnt out? Have you ever gotten to this point where you're just like, I am just tired of learning or I don't know where to go next. Okay. Yes. We're going to go here <laughs> yeah. and I'm not going to pull punches. So, Love um, it. I'm, I'm, I'm still in school yeah. and there's this fancy exam called a, a preliminary exam and it's really difficult math. And, um, I took that thing and, uh, for, reasons beyond my control I didn't pass 
and uh, I had to I had to take it several times, and I was burnt out. Yeah, mm. and so what was interesting is sometimes in school and academia, you it's easier to get burnt out in those environments. Uh, because you've got this set timetable that you have to learn X, Y, Z by. Yeah. And if you don't hit it, then, you know, somebody's out there giving you negative feedback in a, in a mean way, it feels like. But it's it's true. Like, yeah. math doesn't lie. You didn't get the math right. So I have felt burnt out um, at school. In the real world, I can't cut my brain off. I love it. Cool. I mean, like, when you get to learn for the sake of learning and uh, just because you like exploring the world around you and understanding how things work, it's amazing. Like since we've been in here, I've been thinking about how the the building has been built. <laughs> Haven't told you that. <laughs> so, um, but like, for example, you've got cross ties back there. You yeah. have those cross, th that's what keeps the building from swaying this way. On the front of this door out here, you've got a big truss. Yeah. And uh, I, I wanted to ask how the trust worked, but I decided not to because I wanted to just, you know, I'm just going to wait. But I'm going to find somebody. I'm going to say, how does that trust work? Because clearly this this particular door works differently than the one next door to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out why, but I just can't cut that off. I love it. I think it's really cool. And so uh, I don't get burnt out in that way. Mm. Sometimes the, you know, the more... I don't know, the more formal stuff, yeah, it's easier to get burnt out. And yeah. I think it's it's important to to be real with yourself mm. about that. Another thing, here's here's an interesting social media thing, since you do social media. I heard you use the word content earlier. Yeah. yeah, we're making content. I think sometimes you can feel like you're supposed to make content for the sake of make, making content. Do you, do you feel me? Amen. Okay, yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So um, I think what I've started doing and my buddy George works with me at Smarter Every Day. We make videos together. Um, we've made a conscious decision to not make videos because we feel like we have to make a video by a certain day mm. and not trying to win the internet. Yeah. Because if you're just trying to please an algorithm, it's not going to happen. Algorithms are fickle and you know, they're, what are you, what have you done for me lately? If you listen to what they say, they're going to say, Hey, you need to make a YouTube video every single week and you need to upload it Tuesday at 8 a.m. and then that's where you're going to optimize your whatever. Yep. That's not a sustainable way to live. Mm -mm. It's just not. And so one thing I've made a decision to do is never force curiosity when it's not there. And I don't want to pretend I'm talking about this thing and genuinely interested in it if I'm not. Totally. Because your name is worth more than gold. So why, why pretend if it's not real? And Absolutely. so I don't know. I would just... As you're putting out this social media for MAF, I would just say keep it real. And the the good news is you have uh, an incredible story to tell. Yeah. And so all you have to do is just like, hey, uh, you're just getting off the plane. What happened? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it. it's like get out of the way of the story, right? And, and yes, it's a much easier world to live in. That's for sure. It is. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. I would say we're living in a world that's becoming more of a content farm, and I think it's important to kind of push against that by being authentic and genuine. I yeah. think that's important. You feel absolutely. the same way? Oh, of course. Ab yeah. Absolutely. And you mentioned that even this morning when talking to uh, to the staff here was um, one of the things that you just are very passionate about is like be yourself and, and be genuine to who you are. Uh, and I think that that shows through the following that you have, right? Like people aren't going to follow somebody that they feel is fake or is trying too hard. They want to follow a human. And, and I think that 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 space, whether it's marketing as Mission Aviation Fellowship, but they want to follow something that, that is authentic and genuine and feels like they're adding something to their life. And I, I saw a, uh, a tweet yesterday, or an, uh, whatever they call it on X now, a post yeah, or whatever. Right. Who, yeah, who knows what that's called. <laughs> the tweet sounds great. And this person said, if you're trying to get engagement on this platform and you're doing it by the following ways, and they said things like being authentic, being genuine, and like they said like all the things that I would do, he said, you're doing it wrong. Let me tell you how to get more followers. And I was thinking to myself, that is never going, I mean, that's, what What are you doing? And so I, I think it's important to uh, keep perspective. We, we've been given a short amount of time on this earth, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to be good stewards of the time we have and the resources we have. And uh, that's, yeah, I, th I think that's that follows into, into content making as well. Totally. And that's, I've... I've seen what you guys do with the funds that you've been given, and uh, I'm grateful for everything you guys do. It's yeah, impressive. Thank you. I think it's just one of the coolest things about being with you is seeing how um, science and faith are just so interwoven together and how um, often we feel like those are at odds, and, and we're told that those we're are at odds. We're told they're at odds, yeah. And, and I think the, the reality of the matter is that they're actually so interwoven and work so well together. And I agree. And, yeah. I agree. That is well said. Yeah. 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 Um, 
I want to hit you with a couple of rapid fire questions if okay, you don't mind. Let's go. Let's do uh, this. First one is uh, what's a favorite video that you've made? Oh man, okay, I made a video called "Why You Didn't Die at Birth." Yeah, and it's about um, my son, um, my youngest son. When he was born, I had this thought. I was sitting there, you know, one night I was had my hand on my wife's belly, and I was like, "He's in liquid right now," <laughs> and then when he comes out, he's gonna cry. How does that work? Yeah. Because there's a moment where you're like in this liquid environment, and then you're in a gaseous environment, and it happens to millions of people every year. I don't know how many people are born every year. How does that work? <laughs> Turns out there's a guy that uh, goes to church with me. He's a doctor, speaking of faith and science, but he's a doctor that goes to church with me. So I went and talked to him, and he's like, yeah, there's two things in your heart. There's valves that that's closed. There's one's called the uh, foramen ovale. Like when that baby takes that first breath, foomp, there's a valve that shuts. <laughs> It's really cool. And then there's another thing called the ductus arteriosus that I don't completely understand. But basically, the, <laughs> the, the circulation system in the human body, the, the pulmonary system, um, I don't know, the way your, your body's oxygenate, it changes the moment you're born. Hmm. And uh, everything reroutes. And it's hmm. amazing. And I didn't know that. And nobody watches the video, which is completely fine. But I love it because it's, it's my son and it's my wife. And it's a thing I genuinely didn't know. And I can watch that video, and I can look at young Destin in the video, and I can see all the angst and the fear and the uncertainty, mm. but the desire to know. And and I just I really like I really like that one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I love that. Um, pipe dream. What's your What's the video that you are dying to make? <laughs> That you like <laughs> all holds barred. What what's the video? I can't tell you. Okay, fair. But <laughs> yeah, I guess that is. I can a tell dumb you. Question. <laughs> I can tell you because p- somebody will try to do it. I can tell you if you bleep it out or something. You got to bleep it out. Or yeah, something. Okay. yeah, yeah. So it's a. St- okay. Yeah. 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 Amazing. So there's a factory that does that, and um, I've been trying to get in forever, and they won't let me in to see how that that's that happens, and so. It's my white whale. Yeah. And I'm calling them, and I'm like, hey, can I please come film this? And they're like, we don't care. You know, it's just a family-owned business, and they don't care at all. And I'm like, but people would love it, and they would buy your thing. And and they just won't. Oh. They just won't. And it's my white whale, and it's hilarious that it is. And uh, so it's become a joke around around my hometown. They're like, Haha, have you done that yet? <laughs> you're never going to do it. <laughs> Go do whatever you're going to do with whoever else, but you'll never get that video done. Well, now I feel good because when I see that video show up on your on your YouTube, I'm going to be like, he did it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's then we're going to have to have you back on and be like, okay, now what is it? Because What was that like? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah now <laughs> I got to hear more about it. Exactly. So, That's um, a good question. Yeah, yeah I... I'm just like you've you've done so many things and like I was watching your Marine Corps one today yeah. with the uh, going underwater with a helicopter and yeah. I mean just dunker training yeah fascinating stuff that mm. that yeah you just have so many cool things I was like I'm so curious about what the one thing is that you want to so do. here's the trick Here, here's the secret about smarter every day it's it's not really about the things it's about the people mm. there's tons of people doing amazing things all over the world and uh, I just I just really like meeting those people and hearing what they're passionate about yeah so absolutely. I, I, I really love that I love that yeah. I love that well the last question that I kind of want to ask you is um I just you behind beside the camera it's fly season here in Boise oh, it's all in good. Nampa, and <laughs> it just is what it is um what are you like outside of behind the camera like are you like what are hobbies that you have that are not smarter every day like who uh-huh. is destined outside of Smart I Every hope day. I'm the same guy. Yeah. Now, I, I got really, really. I have I have people that are really close friends, and um, we th- they keep me accountable to mm. like never. The the biggest fear I have is to start believing the nice things that people say. Mm. I, that sounds really awful, but but like the the problem with being on the internet and so out there is that you're a click away from a lot of positive things being said about you. There's also negative things. Mm-hmm. But um, my goal is for that never to change me. Yeah. And um, I don't know, intellectual humility is very important. And uh, I'm genuinely scared of it changing that little boy that used to play in the dirt in Alabama. Hmm. Uh, and so uh, I, I never want to drift far from that. And uh, my wife does a great job of keeping me grounded. Yeah. And um, we, we, we talk about that. And so I, I think it's super important. So I would say I hope... I'm the same guy. Hmm. And and sometimes I ask people when I'm turning the camera on and, and I'm like, hey, we, we talk about the thing. Like in the mail room. That was so fun. <laughs> and, and and Good. so the people were like, what the heck is happening? I was like, tell me how it stuffs the envelopes. Yeah. I hope they feel like it's the same person because that's genuinely who I feel like I am. Cool. Um, but uh, one thing we really like to do, dad ventures. 
Yeah, this is this is a secret to all the dads out there. So basically, you load up some of your kids and their friends, and you take them on a trip, and you don't tell them anything. And then you go, you're like, you, you know where you're going to sleep. Yep. You're like, okay, we're going to go to like Helen, Georgia, and we're going to sleep there. And then you get in the car, and you're like, hey, kids, what do you want to do? And they're like, what? Like, yeah, yeah. These are your options. You tell me where we're going. And then the kids make the decisions. No way. And then the mom gets a break. Yeah. Like all their moms get a break, and it's called the dad venture, and it's amazing. And so I would say, I would say do that because away from the camera, I like to do stuff like that. Like we we just took a dad venture. We went uh, over to North Carolina, okay, and then we went from there over to uh, Gatlinburg and okay. Pigeon Forge, uh, Tennessee, and then we came. We did a bunch of stuff, and we didn't put any of it on the internet. Awesome. We just did a bunch of stuff. Didn't put any of it on the internet, and it was wonderful, and people should do that all the time. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds, I mean, yeah. I'm not a dad, and I'm like, I want to do that. Like, how do I it's get really my friends fun. involved? You should, in you this? should this totally awesome. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. great. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank well, you. Let, let me ask yeah. you this. Yeah. How how can people support MAF? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I feel weird that, you know, we're sitting down, we're talking. It's about me a little bit, yeah. but we're in your hangar, and, and you guys are amazing. You do incredible things. What, how can people help what help you do what you do yeah that's a that's a great question i mean there are so many different ways to support and that's one of the things that i love about maf is um we try to meet people where they're at no matter where they're at and so uh that can be financially supporting of course um maf.org maf.org yep we have a, a monthly donor program called the flight crew that um allows for us to to budget a little bit safer where we know income's coming in every month. And so we're, it's a little bit more sustainable in that way. And um, you get some cool videos on top of that and some cool stories and uh, some behind the scenes stuff, which is cool. Um, and then obviously one-time gifts as well. And, uh, well, let me ask you yeah, this. So yeah. if you support monthly, you can support a pilot or a mechanic or a, yep. a teacher. Yep. But then there's also that annual donation, which is the category my wife and I fall into. Yeah. So the, what does that annual donation go to support? And yeah. is that more of the general fund? or? Yeah, so that goes to what we call where most needed. And so it, it's a, a pool of money that... Um, as needs come up, we're able to address it. So that could be for something like plane maintenance, could be for something like um, a subsidized flight for the Lesotho flying pastures, and it could be really anything in between. Really, um, it's uh, it allows for a lot of flexibility for us to be able to, um, yeah, meet needs as they come or meet needs before their needs, um, which is pretty cool. Even being proactive, not reactive. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And so, yeah. So when you give monthly, you can give to a, a missionary uh, a staff member in that way, or you can actually give monthly to the organization and that falls into that where most needed that space awesome. as well, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously great. you can become a pilot or mechanic or teacher, um, it specialist. We have a bunch of different opportunities to, to serve with MAF. Oh really? Um, and so that's pretty cool. You can become a volunteer. Mail room? Mail room? Yeah. I cool. mean, if you want to come be a, be a staff <laughs> member, um, we have a lot of, uh, volunteer spots also, uh, here at headquarters. So volunteers, people can volunteer. Here volunteer here okay. yeah absolutely so we have volunteers that go all the way from um yeah the mail room and and helping uh, in that space to the hangar uh developing different things we have battery carts that were made by a volunteer really um, that were super super uh, blessed by that he just was retired and wanted to use his skills and in that way and yeah you can become a volunteer you can become an advocate which is a volunteer in various spaces uh you can just honestly a follow a like on social media is a, a phenomenal way to support as well just because the more people that see it the better and the more people are impacted all over the world which is that's cool. awesome yeah it's a great question well thank you for explaining that absolutely well how it. can we support you uh what what are th i'm good i'm good just maf.org Smart, at Smarter Every Day. Um, <laughs> I will say, uh, I was going to bring up your uh, engagement story, uh, your proposal story that oh, you yeah. tweeted about yeah. or zeted about or posted about, whatever it is, <laughs> uh, on uh, on Twitter a couple days ago. But yeah. I'll, I'll just let people go follow you at Smarter Every Day, and then they can read that because it was a phenomenal story that I... Uh, oh, it was really was, fun, yeah. yeah. yeah Proposing in a story. cave, that was great. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, if people don't go see your Twitter at that point, they've <laughs> messed up because if you hear proposal in a cave, like, you got to be... It was fun. You got to be... <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, thank Pretty you cool. so much. I thank really you. appreciate the time. Appreciate Nathan. you, seriously. And like, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what you do with all this. Yeah. 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 So thanks so much for uh, taking a look uh, at this podcast. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, and if you're listening to us, uh, come check out the set on our YouTube or on our socials. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, as always, the classic YouTuber uh, thing is subscribe. <laughs> Make sure you click the bell for notifications. I have to say it, that's my job. Uh, 
No, no, I, no, no. Say, say, smash that like yeah, button. Yeah, smash that like <laughs> button. And I've never. Make sure, yeah. That's the first time I've ever said that with a camera around. Does it feel good, though? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> oh, man. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to take a look at this. Uh, my name is Nathan. This is Destin. This is From the Hangar. We'll see you soon. Have a good one.